Hello, my name is Szymon Gajda and I'm a legal counsel and CEO of Foundation Lawyers for Climate. I would like to invite you for a short presentation on current developments in shaping regulatory environment related to offshore wind farms. On July 7, 2020, the updated draft regulation on promoting electricity generation in offshore wind farms was published on the website of the Government Legislation Center. The purpose of the proposed regulation is promotion of investment in so-called renewable energy resources in the course to achieve common EU goal of 32% of non-emission energy generation till 2030. Since onshore wind generation become difficult to develop by virtue of 10 heights distance limit, the need of onshore generation became much more intensive. However, far more complex construction process, necessity of very high financial engagement, as well as many other factors related to the commercial exploitation of Baltic sea shelf, make such investment problematic. This is the reason why there is also need for complex regulation, which is awaited by several important investors, in particular those who are advanced in the investment process. I would like to present a handful of remarks on draft regulation on current stage of legislation. It is worth to mention that it is very close to final wording, however some derivations may occur. Such prediction is justified by influential remarks presented so far by President of Energy Regulation Authority as well as Government's Attorney for Strategic Energy Infrastructure Mr. Piotr Naimski and Transmission System Operator. The draft regulation relates to several areas, including state aid for offshore wind farms, further called OWF. Rules of investment process, including permitting rules and conditions of OWF grid connection, specific tax rules for OWF, and conditions of OWF exploitation. There are also several other miscellaneous areas, as well as important regulatory changes in existing regulations. Among most important are draft amendments in the Act of Maritime Areas of the Republic of Poland and Maritime Administration, as well as Maritime Security Act and Energy Law. There is no doubt that rules and conditions of state aid are the most important part of the drafted act not only because they constitute about one-third of it, but also it is more than obvious that there is no wind farm investment process possible without such an end. Current legislative discussion initiated by Mr. Piotr Naimski and Polish transmission system operator, as well as President of Energy Regulation Authority, focus on the very important grid connection aspects, as well as ownership of the grid infrastructure, that will accompany wind farms. There are also proposals of better compatibility of OWF investment process with TSO's grid development plan and security of energy supply. Whole regulation is complex and exhaustive to very far extent that was emphasized by many experts in panel discussion on latest event development vision forum in Gdynia. In my short presentation, I will focus mainly on several aspects important from the point of view of investment process. However, this will be only a chunk of the whole regulated matter. The proposed separate support system for OWF is based on model of contract for difference, which is known from General Renewable Energy Resources support system. In general, the amount of support will be calculated as a difference between the price set in decision, issued by regulatory authority or offered during auction, and product of the market price of energy and amount of produced energy. If the market price of the energy falls below the zero, the amount of energy that entitles to the state aid equals zero. Such a mechanism was implemented in order to discourage OWF energy producers to produce energy when there is no market demand. The basic condition to obtain coverage for negative balance is duty to produce and insert to the grid the agreed amount, however there is also exception from that condition. The state aid is also granted when the OWF operator notice regulatory authority about lack of possibility to fulfill the obligation to produce electric energy. However, the operator must start production within 24 months since previously set term. It is important to mention that the support system is divided on two stages. 
The first one, based on discretionary decision of regulatory authority, is available to OWF operator who will take the duty to start production before 2030. The second system, based on offering during electronic auction organized by the authority, will be available to the all operators. Both systems grant support in the same amount and the same period on 25 years. However, there are also important differences in respect of procedure and scope of information and project documentation, which is necessary to be provided. The support will be limited to legally defined infrastructure. The project regulation defined OWF as a separate set of devices for energy production, which includes one or more offshore wind turbines, together with power stations located at sea, used for power export from these offshore wind turbines. It is important to notice that farm defined as it is in drafted regulation consists of two functionally separate elements, the turbine, including tower, and elements of the grid. Second part might be obtained by TSO in order of execution of statutory preemption rights. There is also proposal of amendment to the draft regulation submitted by government attorney for strategic energy infrastructure to supplement preemption rights with option call for TSO. This proposal is also followed by proposal to change definition and exclude from the de definition devices on the transformer high voltage site or transformers located at the station and set of devices used to take off the power from an OWF and to an ownership limitation point in case the ownership limitation point is located at power station situated onshore. It is very possible that definition of OWF will differ from currently proposed in draft because second important consulting authority responsible for energy market regulation also presented significant remarks in that matter. It should be emphasized that apart from important ownership and capex issues, definition may have important impact on the scope of the state aid. There is detailed mechanism of deduction of the price set in decision or offer by the amount of investment aid. The price paid by TSO in case of obtaining grid elements shall be regarded also as part of the investment aid. The state aid aid of for OWF shall be also limited to installations located in the specific area. There are eight areas described in appendix to the draft regulation by specific geocentric and geodetic coordinate. The support system is also limited to specified total amount of OWF installed power, which should be understood as a total nominal power defined by the producer, calculated in conditions accepted for rated conditions. Total limit of support for all OWF is limited to 5.9 gigawatts in discretionary decision system and to twice 2.5 gigawatts in 2025 and 2027 auction. There is also other amount limitation of total support granted to separate OWF. The total amount of electric energy which entitles the producer to granted contracted difference shall not exceed product of 100,000 hours and total installed power of OWF. In case of difference between amount of installed power declared in concession for energy production and decision on negative balance coverage, the lower amount prevails. What may have, have important impact on investment process, the state's support is limited to wind turbines produced not later than 72 months before first energy production day and were not subject to depreciation in meaning of accountancy rules. That condition de facto eliminates possibility of reuse offshore turbines. The draft regulation also puts investment process under time pressure. It derives from necessity of providing detailed time schedules to regulatory authority, as well as fulfill obligation to commence energy production on the designated day. It also gives better position to operators who will submit an application for support or offers during the auction earlier. During administrative procedure, if the operator will submit application for support that will exceed total supported amount, the regulatory authority will provide the operator with notice and in such a circumstance, he will have 21 days to change original application. 
failure in submission of amended application will result with denial of support. The application submitted after date specified in Article 108 of the draft regulation, which enters into force on 30 June 2021, will be rejected. The above mentioned article specifies that applications submitted not later than on 31st March 2021 will be considered till 30 June 2021. It may link to confusion which date might be a grant of rejection. However, according to Article 14 of the draft, the regulatory authority has 45 days to consider the application. If the 31st March was considered as a deadline, the authority would be entitled to reject the application submitted on 1st April on 16th May on the ground of statutory provision that will not enter into force in time of issuing the decision. That leads to the conclusion that the deadline date for the application is 30 June 2021. The operator is obliged to start energy production within seven years since decision issuing date after receiving a concession for energy production. The application must be accompanied by following documents. The original or certified copy of the contract for connection of the offshore wind farm to the transmission or distribution network. A map confirming that the location of the offshore wind farm is within the limits of areas described in the appendix to the regulation. Original or certified copy of a valid permit for construction and use of artificial islands, structures and devices in Polish sea areas for project located in the exclusive economic zone. Material and financial schedule for construction of an offshore wind farm along with a set of devices used to take off power from the state installation to the place where ownership is limited, ensuring the generation and insertion to the grid of electricity from the OWF within seven years since decision issuing date, plan for the supply chain of materials and devices, technical and economic description of the proposed offshore wind farm investment, showing the incentive effect, information specified in the regulation of the state aid. It should be noted that above mentioned list of documents may be changed in final version of the regulation. In example, in previous version of the draft, the list included also the final de decision on environment conditions. In remarks provided by Mr. Piotr Naimski, there is suggestion to restore this requirement. However, it must be noted that if it happens, it will be with prejudice to OWF projects in contradiction to time pressure described earlier. From the pr perspective of the scope of administrative discretion, it must be noted that however regulation treats duty to provide specific documents, this duty must be considered as formal. There is no competence granted to regulatory authority in order to assess their content. Thus, on the basis of the application of OWF operator, which will meet the requirements specified in the Draft Act, will be issued a decision granting the rights to cover the negative balance. It will be subject to individual notification to European Commission. The exercise of the right to negative balance coverage, in example, its payment, will be possible only after the Commission issues a decision recognizing the support as permissible under EU state aid regulation. From that point of view, documents provided must constitute a proof for incentive effect. What should be described as a situation when proposed investment would not be implemented in the event that the electricity generated in the OWF would not be granted the right to cover the negative balance. This is why the rate of return will be an element of the decision and its rise above 1% will bring necessity to, to change the decision. The application in pre-qualification to auction procedure must be accompanied by following documents. The original or certified copy of the promise to connect or the contract for connection of the offshore wind farm to the transmission or distribution grid, the original or certified copy of the final decision on environmental conditions for a given offshore wind farm, original or certified copy of a valid permit for the construction and use of artificial island structures and devices in Polish sea areas for projects located in the exclusive economic zone, material and financial schedule for the construction of an offshore wind or wind farm, along with a set of devices used to take off power from this installation, 
to the place where ownership is limited, ensuring the generation and insertion to the grid of electricity from the OWF within seven years since decision issuing date. The plan for supply chain of materials and services, information specified in the regulations on the state date. The required documents must be provided to the regulatory authority before auction in order to be granted pre-qualification and, on that ground, possibility to submit an offer in electronic auction system. There are three main differences between documentation requirements given during discretionary decision procedure and pre-qualification procedure. The first one is possibility to provide promise of agreed connection. The second necessity to provide final decision on environmental conditions for a given offshore wind farm. And the last one, a lack of duty to provide technical and economic description of the proposed offshore wind farm investments showing the incentive effect. Draft regulation introduces two new obligations for OWF to stimulate the development of the local supply chain. In order to stimulate domestic industry providing equipment and services for the construction of the farms. First, in the process of applying for the right to cover the negative balance, in the first phase of the support system or in pre-qualification to the auction, generators will be required to present a supply chain plan for materials and services in the offshore wind farm construction and operation process. Subsequently, producers will have to report the implementation of the plan. Then, There are three mandatory elements of the plan which relate to local content issue. First one, description of the share of investments that are to be incurred by the OWF operator or entrepreneurs belonging to the capital group to which the operator belongs for the benefit of entities with a registered office or branch in the territory of the Republic of Poland in the total investments for the construction or operation of an offshore wind farm. Second, description of activities that the operator or entrepreneurs belonging to the capital group to which do so belongs or suppliers of materials and services used for the construction or operation of an offshore wind farm intends to take part in the territory of Republic of Poland in order to develop human resources in the field of competences and improve professional qualification needed for construction or operation of an offshore wind farm. Third, description and estimated number of jobs that it intends to create on the territory of the Republic of Poland. The operator or entrepreneurs belonging to the capital group to which the producer belongs and suppliers of materials and services used. All above mentioned local content elements are regarded as declarations more than duties of the OWF operator. Illegal sanctions are prescribed only for non-providing required information or providing unreliable information. According to Article 38 of Draft Regulation, the OWF operator prior to submitting the updated plan for the supply chain of materials and services is obliged to conduct a dialogue with potential suppliers of materials and services used in the construction and operation of the offshore wind farm. The dialogue shall be conducted in a manner ensuring fair competition and equal treatment of potential suppliers and their solutions. Dialogue is a typical self-regulatory solution. The way of conduct must be described in supply chain plan. The regulatory authority, in its opinion submitted during legislation process, described above mentioned solution as unsatisfactory. President of the regulatory authority presents opinion that the legislator did not apply any criterion regarding the amount of materials and services. Although this regulation might seem to be very limited, it should play its role to some extent even in such a wording. Most of service providers would be probably serious entrepreneurs who use sophisticated methods of financing their activity. It is quite likely that the dialogue will stay in line with RFP and RFI procedures, which are already in force. However, if it happens a different way, the regulation will provide clear guidance. The operator will be obliged to declare in its supply chain plan also planned dates of key procedures for the selection of suppliers of materials and services, indicating the planned mode of selecting contractors 
and the expected conditions for participation in the procedure as well as tender evaluation criteria. Description of the predicted initiative for research and development and innovation related to the implementation of the wind farm investments. There are three main documents issued by grid operators during the investment process. Conditions of connection to the grid, promise of connection to the grid, and the agreement on connection to the grid. Regulation on the grid connection to some extent duplicate provisions of energy law, which regulate the connection issues. If Article 41 of the draft regulation will remain in proposed wording, it may cause some challenges in its application. However, there are suggestions from regulatory authority to consider their abandon. Drafted regulation contains specific provisions related to the connection promise. It is valid for two years from the date of its delivery, however, does not constitute an obligation of the grid operator to conclude an agreement for connection of the power grid. It is valid for two years from the date of its delivery, however, does not constitute an obligation of the grid operator to conclude an agreement for connection to the power grid. Document of the promise might be important in the auction prequalification procedure. However, the regulatory authority emphasizes its weak character and lack of proper legal protection of justified interest of OWF operator. When OWF operator is granted right to cover negative balance, the promise ex lege becomes the conditions of connection, which are valid for two years. The grid connection agreement in respect of OWF provides better legal protection according to termination rules. In particular, failure to deliver electricity generated in the offshore wind farm for the first time to the grid within the time limit specified in the connection agreement shall not constitute grounds for termination of connection agreement if it occurred as a result of valid regulations of generally applicable law, the need to ensure the safety of the, of the power grid operation, failure in the power system, force measure understood as an event of serious events independent of the producer which could not be avoided or overcome which include natural disaster, war, hostilities, act of terrorism, riots, failure of a nuclear power plant. Technical requirements for the construction of a set of devices used to export power from the offshore wind farm to place where ownership is limited are planned to be developed by TSO. It shall be prepared in cooperation with producers, taking into account the state of technical knowledge and international standard applicable on the day of its preparation. TSO shall inform OWF operators about public access to the draft requirements of their change and about the possibility of submitting comments specifying the place and time for their submission with at least 30 days from the day of which the draft requirements were made available or changed. In opinion of regulatory authority, the grid connection rules proposed in the draft, including the, in particular the need to develop individual technical requirements by the TSO for each installation agreed with the President of the Energy Regulatory Authority, should be changed and based on the solutions adopted so far. Transferring this type of solutions to the level of individual arrangements, including the right to regulatory interference, may lead to be observed in practice as a situation of year-long disputes between the interested parties. Although there are some doubts in respect of procedure, the scope of requirements that will be necessary to be issued shall probably remain unchanged. It is worth to mention that telecommunication systems required for OWF should guarantee the transmission of the data in real time. It might be a challenge in maritime environment. OWF, in terms of design, construction, operation and decommissioning, shall meet requirements that ensure safety of the structure and construction in terms of strength, bearing capacity and stability, fire safety, safety of use, environmental protection, operational conditions suitable for the purpose of various types of devices 
and structures or installations included in the offshore wind farm. The above mentioned requirements shall be certified by a reputable organization, which is accredited according to ISO provision 17065 and authorized by Ministry of Maritime Affairs. Such an organization will be authorized to issue design compliance certificate issued after the construction design has been developed prior to the commencement of construction works related to the construction of an offshore wind farm, certificate of admission to operation issued after the completion of the construction of the offshore wind farm or its part, confirming the compliance of the construction process with the construction design and the design compliance certificate referred to in point one, no later than 30 days before the planned date of the first generation of offshore electricity, the wind farm or part of it, and sale safety certificate issued for a period no longer than five years starting from the date of issue of the certificate referred to in point two, re requiring renewal for not earlier than three months before its expiry date, confirming completeness of the documentation for the proper ma maintenance and servicing of the offshore wind farm. The above mentioned regulation was contested by Mr. Piotr Naimski, who suggested that all certification services should be provided by technical inspection authority. In order to accelerate the construction and starting operation of offshore wind farms and thus to supply the Polish power system with large amounts of clean energy produced in zero emission installations, Draft regulation provides some modification to administrative procedure necessary for the efficient conduct of investments in the construction of OWF. First of all, a set of decisions explicitly mentioned in the draft regulation will become immediately enforceable. Next, in the proceedings before an authority of higher degree and before an administrative court, the decision, decision referred will not be subject to declaration of invalidity in full if only a part of the decision concerning offshore wind farm is affected by the legal defect. The NGO will be entitled to participate in the administrative procedure if it has been entered into relevant register at least one year before the organization filled a request to allow it to participate in the procedure. And last but not least, draft regulation provides mechanism of additional time pressure on all administrative authorities. According to Article 69.7, about each case of fa failure to issue the decisions referred to earlier, as well as the failure to consider those decisions, the authority competent to consider the case shall notify the parties the, uh, of the proceedings and the ministry competent for climate matters, giving the reasons for delay and indicating a, a new date for setting the matter. The authority competent to consider the case shall also notify the chief inspector of building supervision stating the reason for the delay and indicating a new date for setting the matter of each case of failure to issue a decision on a building permit or use permit. Thank you very much for your attention.